There are two questions I consistently get here on Shoot Tokyo. One is, what camera should I get? The other one is, what settings are you using? Well, today I'm going to talk about the latter, what settings am I using, in the context of street photography, when I'm out shooting the black and white photos you might see here on Shoot Tokyo. So typically when I'm out shooting street photography, I'm usually using my Leica M monochrome with a 28 millimeter Summicron F 2.0 lens. Um, I choose Leica because it works for me. Um, there might be a different camera that works for you. Uh, Leica works for me for a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, it's small, it's compact, it's discreet. Uh, I'm often not out photographing for a day. Uh, I usually only get to do that once or twice. Uh, a month. For the most part, the images you see on Shoot Tokyo, I'm capturing as I go about my day, commuting to and from work, uh, or running errands, uh, or out on the weekend with my wife. Uh, and that's where I capture the bulk of my images. So I need a camera that's not bulky, that's very small, and very portable. The one beauty of the Leica system is there's not a lot of settings that you have to deal with. Um, and in the case of exposure, no matter what camera you're using, you're sort of dealing with three settings. You're dealing with aperture, ISO and shutter speed. And shutter speed and aperture are really the ones that are going to kind of make or break your image. And when you're shooting, you know, street photography, you're trying to capture the entire scene around you. So you want to be shooting with an aperture that allows you to get everything in focus. So uh, often I'm shooting f8, f11, or even f16 so that I can ensure a really wide depth of field so that everything from a few feet in front of me, all the way to something off in the distance is sharp and in focus. The next consideration you've got is shutter speed. Now, you want a shutter speed that will stop whatever subject you have in its tracks and freeze that subject. And if it's somebody walking or maybe it's a car passing, so you really want something like 1 250th of a second or 1 500th of a second. Um, and usually I set my ISO to something that's, that's manageable. So for me, I set it around 3200. Because um, I think the the noise level on the camera is not is not unbearable, um, and it gives me a really fast shutter speed and gives me uh, uh, allows me to use the aperture I want that gets everything in focus. So what I would do is I'd, I'd play around and make sure that your ISO can, you know, when you look at that final image, you're okay with it. Now, if you notice, I make my images uh, a little bit gritty after in post production, and so I'm not really concerned about noise in the image. So again, the three things you're going to worry about, shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. Okay, so let's review. We're going to look for an aperture that's f8, f11, f16, so that we can get everything from right in front of us to off in the distance and focus. We're going to look to get a shutter speed of about 1 250th of a second, 1 500th of a second, so you can freeze everything in your frame. And then lastly, you want an, an ISO that will allow those two to give you a proper exposure. Um, you should test your camera and see what ISO level you're comfortable with. Uh, a lot of DSLRs and uh, a, lot, a lot of the modern cameras today have really, really high ISO ranges. My Leicas don't have uh, as high of an ISO range that's, that's still usable, but I'm pretty happy with what I can get with my monochrome, which is why I typically choose that over my Leica uh, M9P. So I was out shooting with my friend Nathan the other day, and I was actually shooting the configuration we were just talking about, and got some pretty good images. So when I walk you through a few of those images, and uh, showed I was able to capture, and I'll talk about a few of the images. So one thing I love doing is shooting in train stations in Tokyo, and uh, often you can find great lighting in the train stations. And in this particular image, there was a, a slight incline, and I was at the bottom of it. So uh, you know, there's a great vantage point as the people are coming down the incline and the lighting was giving off some really cool soft shadows. So, you know, what you do is you set up your shot and then you wait till you have the, you know, sort of the right amount of people coming down and the right amount of distance between you and the subject to take your shot. 
I'm a big fan of negative space in my images, so you'll see I, I tend to use that quite a lot, uh, especially because Tokyo is a, is a place that you don't have a lot of uh, negative space. So putting into the image, I think, provides a very uh, different view and, and can often surprise the viewer. I'm a big fan of these turnstiles where you, you where you enter the subway station. Uh, there's always so much activity at them and there's so much happening. Uh, if you're starting out in street photography, it's also a great place to sort of set up a shot and then sort of wait for your action to, to come into your frame. Uh, it's, a, it's a good technique for people that are getting started. Uh, and you can always get some really interesting shots, especially if you stand there for 10 or 20 minutes and you kind of you know, wait for different people to kind of come through the turnstile or different people to pass in front of it. This is a scene that I love to capture as well, is you'll get people that are, are equally spaced apart as they're waiting either on a subway platform or in this case they're waiting for friends to get off the train. Uh, and it's interesting because people just seem to naturally have this you know, personal space distance between each other. And it almost looks like I took the five of them and posed them there uh, in, those, in those different positions. Uh, and that's something I'm always on the lookout for. Uh, and I think it was made especially good because there's these giant pictures of people behind them. So it just, it makes for an interesting photo, I think. Uh, sort of wish that timetable on the left wasn't there. And uh, unfortunately I couldn't ask everyone to move over, uh, but I thought about it. So I hope you liked today's video. I'm thinking about doing more videos like this, perhaps talking about my post-production process for my Leica uh, monochrome images, um, perhaps talk a little more about uh, how I work on shots when I'm out on the street and, and things I'm considering. Uh, if things like that are interesting to you or if there's other things you're interested in, uh, leave a comment below and let me know what you're looking for. Okay, thanks for stopping by today.